Hello, everyone. This is the Belmont Journal, and I'm your host, Mike Crowley, today for this special episode. Anyone who drives down Concord Avenue in Belmont can see that the new school construction project is progressing, but few have had the opportunity to tour the building site. Our local journalists got a chance to do just that on January 27th, and the visit was filmed by Belmont Media Center's Frederic Rigolo. I'm Tom Gazunas. I'm the owner's project manager from CHA Consulting Daedalus Projects. And here we're looking at the four floor plans of the high school, middle school building. First floor, second floor, third floor, and fourth floor is there. Uh, the areas that we'll be walking through on the building today are from approximately this line to the left. Uh, this is the existing field house, swimming pool um, that remained and are in being refurbished as we speak, literally. We won't be going into this area. That's a locker room area that's in heavy construction um, and really not accessible from our entrance today. But this is the cafeteria area. We'll be walking in through here, main foyer as, as everybody will be coming into the building, uh, the administration wing. This is the, on the first floor, the music wing is here. And we'll be going through all of that area as well as these upper floors. So this is the real walk, I mean driveway. Um, it's in place that we're walking on now. These are the colonnades. You see the finishes are done. What you see below the brick will all be glass where it's covered with the white tarps. That's all gonna be glass and open into the building. So it's very visible. That all the high school students, this is their main entrance coming into the building that we're walking into now. Just general overview. All right, you're in the main entry, main atrium. <clears throat> uh, a wing, B wing, C wing as we kind of go through. So, uh, so you have your bearings a little bit. Um, when you walk in on day one, you'll have a grand entry stair here going all the way up to the fourth floor. Uh, but just through kind of this open pathway here will be the whole cafe commons and just commons area in general that they're calling it. Um, <clears throat> So the middle school is absolutely no part of this construction phase right now. Um, there's a little overlap at the end of the day, but right now for all intents and purposes, this is the high school, right? So uh, back corner over there, we'll go over is the pool. To my left is all three, all four stories is the auditorium. And then mostly the A wing administrative classrooms. B wing have band, chorus, performing arts, right? And then C wing is really all your specialty areas with um, maker spaces, double height spaces, um, chemistry, biology, engineering, uh, that sort of thing. So that's kind of how it breaks down. So what are the particularities of building a school compared to another building? Is there something that is different or is just a... The overall size uh, of the building, you know, this is, this is a very large school, 7 through 12, uh, be it just under about a half a million square feet when it's completed, including both of the schools. But it's a very flexible space. Um, you know, this is being built for the next 50 years. So and we know that technology will change, we know that teaching and learning will change, and the space is designed to accommodate for those changes that we haven't even thought of, um, you know, that our grandchildren will be using in the future.
Yeah. So this is a classroom? Typical classroom, yep. So you always have the accents going? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So right, this, this, this is the control room for the black box. Is the Thank black you. box the equivalent of what's now called the little theater in the existing building? I think it is. Yes. Okay. Um, sort of, kind of. The, the, a black box is much more versatile than the little theater was. And it's time, as you know, anybody who's been in the little theater, the seats are fixed, uh, it's sloped, the presentation is all from the front. The black box will allow presentations to happen really in 360, so from any direction, however they want to set it up for that particular production. All of the catwalks in the building, uh, in the black box as well as in the auditorium, are accessible, handicap accessible to wheelchairs. So any of the students that are in a wheelchair can still participate in, in that production from that back of house point of view if that's what their interests are. Is there a orchestra room here? Yes. Yeah. And it will be all glass? That's all glass. Yes. That's all glass. Just watch your step on the floor. Yeah. So this space, as you see, it is exactly what it will be. Obviously, it's much more finished. So this second floor is a balcony with a you know half height railing, half wall railing, uh, and then the upper floors. <clears throat> the third floor is all open to below, but enclosed with glass. So, but here you can actually you know speak not, over. Speak over, yeah. <laughs> We're, I'm, we're standing on the balcony of the auditorium right now. All of the staging that you see that goes down two floors is what we refer to as a, it, it's a functioning dance floor for the contractors to do the ceiling work in that auditorium space that's three stories high. So you had to build all this temporary staging and we'll go up to the next level and you'll see that so that with the work that's happening up here. But you get the view now from the balcony down into the auditorium. That's the stage, okay? And in front of the stage, you can see that depression, which is the orchestra pit. So where in your percentage are you done in this, just the um, high school? In stage? the high school wing, we're um, just under 50%. Just under 50%? Yeah. Yep. And, and you're gonna get that other 50% in nine months? Yep. Wow. <laughs> yep. Very impressive. Yep. Students will be in the building in September. This is the uh, most finished wing of the building. So this week, because of all, you know, we have a ton of stuff out laid out in the corridors. We've cleaned out all the classrooms. We're starting the flooring this week in all the classrooms. So it's a big rollout sheet. So you have to basically clear the whole classroom and level all the floors and put the flooring down. Okay. And where you see these recesses in the corridors, that's where lockers will be. Yep. Mm -hmm. well, what is this room? So this is a, uh, I'm gonna call it a double classroom, but <clears throat> so this, this offers a lot of flexibility to you know, the, the school. There's a partition that'll fold up and typically divide this double classroom into you know single single classrooms, you know the standard size classrooms. Um, but if the need arises, each department has one of these double classrooms to be able to hold up, you know, obviously double, triple size the class uh, at one time. So rather than you utilizing like an auditorium space or a, a cafeteria space for a bigger class. But this is um, right now as finished as the, the building is in terms of classroom space. So you have paint, you have ceilings, windows, window trim. Like I said, floors are next, ceiling devices. And then uh, we'll, we'll go 
go with casework and all the specialties that start to go in the classrooms. And this floor itself in two months will be complete, ready for punch list. And so that's roughly April 1st. But we have to start that process, you know, four, five months before actually turning the school over because, you know, so it's 300,000 square feet to cover, so. So toward mid-April or the first of March, this will look almost complete without the furniture. If you came through in May-ish, yeah. yeah, it would, you know, just like if, you know, if you came in in three months, yeah. just like if you came in three months ago, right. yeah, the, the progress is moving pretty quick. Very good. It has to. It always happens in the past year. We always have to move faster. I mean, just a big picture in the floor, and then now, and then again, for eight months from now, you're going to have two and three months. Yep. So again, like Tom was saying, you can kind of see a little bit better on this floor because there isn't a million things in the hallway. But um, you know, tile on one side of the corridor. Lockers are on the opposite side of the corridor. And then if you can kind of visualize the ceiling as it goes down the corridor here, this is essentially intended to be the walking path from class to class. And then you're on the locker side. And then on this side, the flooring will actually change from like a, a linoleum to a carpet. And these will be more seating areas with furniture and places for students to, you know, hang out, talk. Oh, breakout spaces. Yep. Whether it's come out of the classroom and you know work with Johnny or Mary on a particular project, or you got some free time and want to do some homework, work with your partner on again whatever project, you have those breakout spaces along. Yeah. It, it, it's intended to be quiet working spaces because the classrooms will be active obviously during the school day. So just on the other side, you know, the safety barrier, these are big, uh, we call them borrowed light frames, so big glass frames. So where you don't see the steel now will just be glass open to obviously below, and then from below to up above, so. There's a very in-depth, very thought out phasing plan that's been put together by the town and the design team. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're just, we're here to execute that plan, obviously, but, um, you know, the, the physical barrier that's going to be between the two schools, you know, is, is simply put, yes, a wall, but that space that, you know, technically overlaps between the, what will be the full project high school, middle school at the end of the day, right now we are using for phasing space so whether it's on the first floor and it's cafeteria area the second floor and if it's um you know specialty engineering or science classrooms or whatever that that area is because it still communicates with the adjacent classrooms that it's in right. that's a very well thought out you know phased area so that that summer in 2023 when we combine the buildings and take that wall down right. um it's we have the ability in that shorter time frame to you know Put the finished product together so um hopefully that so Mike, can you paints it in a little bit you know less rough light i guess yeah can you explain what we're looking at Just what... right here so we're on the third floor we're looking down into the future cafeteria so to the left where all of the toolboxes and everything that is sitting there that will be the kitchen and servery that backs into the pool area uh, so students will come in here, they'll get their lunch, and then they have this big space, which also carries into, as Franklin was saying, underneath the second floor over there. This stair, this is the main stair. As you come in from the lobby, the stair continues up. As you, you see it coming up and then come around, go back up to the fourth floor. That's the main stair of the building on the high school side. 
Where we're walking is the entrance into the catwalk area for the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And again, these catwalks are all accessible to anybody in a wheelchair who wants to participate in the production from that point of view, if that's what their interest is. So that will be the control room up on that, you know, that raised slab right there. You can't see down through. We have a temporary dance floor, we call it, or a temporary platform to do all this elevated work, you know, from head height or, you know, standing and just off ladders rather than on 40, 50 foot lifts. <clears throat> so we have all the duck runs, all the utilities that run in the ceiling. And then we'll step this down to build the rest of the finishes as we go. And then eventually this comes out, we build up the raised seating floors and then we start finishes. All of that staging that we looked at from underneath, and you guys got to look into it, Support. that's supporting this floor and that level. Mm -hmm. How are they doing? What's the work and activity they're doing? Fire electric? protection, okay. electric, HVAC, all, yeah, all, the utilities. all the utilities. The very inclusive design and that's very great. inclusive building. And it should be. Yeah. <laughs> The maker spaces are like that engineering innovation space. It's the, the, the hands-on, build-it type of space, uh, classroom environment for the students. High ceilings, a lot of, like the, the structural members will be exposed um, quite a bit in this area because it's part of that teaching and learning experience. So the teacher can literally point to something and say, see that, that's helping to hold up the building and this is how the connections are made and the beams tie into the columns and the columns go up to the roof and carry the roof but continue all the way down. It's, it's hands-on. It, the entire heating and cooling system for the building is geothermal. There will be no fossil fuels used in this building at all. It's a very innovative design. Um, the Again, the heating and cooling system is all geothermal, uh, very energy efficient. The entire roof area will be covered with solar panels and all the products that are used are sustainable. Very high energy efficiency values. And what is the most exciting part of building a, pro a project like this? The entire process, really, from start to finish. The most exciting part is the first day when the students come into the building. That's, that's the greatest satisfaction and the most exciting feature. More of a continuation of the maker spaces than the song just described. Oh, yeah. This style of floor is, uh, Tom, third floor uh, chemistry, biology. One of those two. Yes. It's a science lab. Yes. I, I know that for a fact. Yeah. Third floor is chemistry. So this staircase is temporary. It'll eventually be removed as part of that 2023, um, you know, switch over or tie-in of the yeah. middle school and the high school. And then actually in this same bay that uh, the, the grand stair that we saw for the high school mm -hmm. that Tom pointed out, the, the middle school will have its own entry main staircase which will sit basically right in the same location. This side will be closed off. Uh yeah that's a whole um wall MEP shaft mechanical rooms oh. on that side. Okay. Yep. And that wall in front of you is the, I mean, that's a new wall, but behind that is the field house. Yep. Yep. So locker room space is behind here for the pool. Mm -hmm. And then there will be a pathway into the ground floor of the field house. Excavation for the swimming pool it, and the concrete for the pool all remained. The pool is the exact same size. Its foundation is all, was all existing. 
There's all new piping that was um, provided, new drainage system, ventilation system for the whole pool area. The, the building has been constructed to meet all building code requirements um, and the building committee is reviewing some enhancements that could be made if the school department and school committee chooses to go that route with um, advancements beyond current code requirements. Um, but it will be at additional cost? Yes, yes. You're in the cafeteria. This is the, the views you'd get. Uh, unfortunately, we've got a construction Thanks. trailer there, so you can't see the view of the pond here, but uh, the pond is right behind that. And I think it is noteworthy. This green trailer that you see that's out there, that was brought in specifically because of COVID and the pan pandemic that we're in. We're providing bathrooms that are heated with hot and cold running water for all of the workers to keep everybody safe. So the frit, like the polka dot yeah. frit there you see, yeah. so that, that will, um, that used as more like a sun shading device. There's also shades that come in, but on the outside, all the vertical mullions here on the outside will also have like a sun diverting, um, sunshade itself it's actually oh, okay. a vertical at like a 45 degree similar concept and look it'll be a perforated piece of metal mm. that'll shade you know uh you know shade this area as the sun comes across because you know north is here so east sun rises okay, over there right. so it crosses this area all day long right yeah. and that's why that frit is larger and then tapers Right. Yeah. because of the way that the sun oh, will enter. So what are the main things that you remain to uh, to be done? Like the you know, work to complete? Yeah. There's a lot. Um, like, you know, the, the parts, there's plenty of the building that, you know, we weren't able to see because, you know, you could walk through this building for a whole day and still not see every square inch. But um, the first areas that will be 100% complete are scheduled to be complete in the next couple of months. And then the last areas that are scheduled to be complete in this building will literally be complete at the last possible day that we have before students come in the building. So um, that ranges from, you know, just your finishes, standard finishes of paint and ceiling and flooring and <clears throat> millwork, casework, right? To, you know, we have an entire kitchen to install. We have an entire pool to install. You know, we have an entire auditorium to install. So there's, um, there's a lot of specialty areas in this building that, you know, aren't as simple as just uh, your standard classroom. So it is a lot of specialty work, but then a lot of production work at the same time. So at the end of the day, what Skanska's obligation to the town is to make sure that this is an occupiable space, a safe, occupiable space for students, staff, faculty. And, you know, the, the biggest point there is, is that um, the town sign off so electrical plumbing fire the fire department as well as you know the the lead building inspector for the town um, needs to we need to prove and he'll certify the space is occupiable and provide that certificate of occupancy for you know to us but then we you know for the town so that the, the school can occupy and have two years of you know full-time space in the high school and then we'll get a full certificate of occupancy when you know we combine and finish the project in 2023 uh, yeah so all the site work will start in the spring oh well yep and um there's uh there's also phased pieces to that mm -hmm. as well the site work and the the landscaping finish work outside franklin is is phased as well mm -hmm. so we have temporarily temporary parking spaces Right. That lot's built outside. Right. That'll exist for two years. Oh, wow. And that's part of the phasing plan as well. So then that'll actually go away. It'll be grass and plantings. And, mm -hmm. and um, that, when the, you know, when the more parking spaces open up in the back, right? right? So they've, they've gone through the whole phasing of this just to keep, you know, while this, we're, we're 
coexisting on the campus, right? Yeah. They still keep it as. Uh, a lot of planning that goes in to the project from years before there's even a shovel in the ground. Uh, you know, we rely on the whole team here, so not just the construction team and our subcontractor team, but the owner's project manager and the design team, we all work together to put a schedule in place that, you know, we can all achieve. And then working with our subcontractor partners, uh, you know, take a big picture schedule on this one, it's all over four years and we break it down into phases and then we break it down into years and months and weeks and days. And uh, we make sure that, you know, all of the work that needs to go into place is sequenced properly and we get the input from all of the folks that need to actually execute that work. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a huge effort. I mean, we have over 200 folks on the job here uh, on a daily basis. As of now, we'll probably peak around 250, but we need to make sure that every man and woman that are out here working are, you know, productive and, and moving and moving the project to the, you know, that finish goal every single day. So there's a lot of work. Yeah. Safety is our number one priority. Uh, and obviously COVID-19 has, has put a, um, a different spin on that this year. So um, with, you know, the health and safety of our workforce going home every day being our number one priority long before COVID-19 was ever a thing, right? Uh, you know, it's even more important now because, you know, there's, as we all know, the safety provisions and protocols and guidelines that have been rolling out since almost a year ago now have certainly changed the way not just our professional lives have been impacted, but our personal lives, right? So uh, we have to take that same approach that we all want to stay safe and healthy and keep our family and friends healthy, but we have to make sure that all 200 plus men and women that are here are in a safe environment, but are also keeping each other safe at the same time. So mask wearing and social distancing and, you know, proper planning and spacing of the work is, you know, there's been an added emphasis on this this year.